So in this tutorial, our objective is to uh, show how one can perform a simulation of a BPSK system. Okay. Uh, in general, the same concepts that we will uh, look at can be used actually to simulate um, any other type of digital communication system. But uh, we start with BPSK because it's the simplest and it gives the essence of the simulation. So from the name of what we want to do, um, we want to perform a simulation. So we want to mimic the operation of um, an actual PBSK system uh, and just to be in the context we are discussing the case where uh, it's only affected by additive white Gaussian noise so we don't really have any fading or channel effect in the system however we can add that later but not in the scope of uh, this course so let's see what happens in an actual uh, BPSK uh, added, um, communication system under additive white Gaussian noise the, the steps that are performed in an actual system is as follows. We have a source, right? This source is generating binary bits, so it's generating ones or zeros, and they are with probability equal to one half, a uh, similar with probability equal to one half, right? And then these bits which will have the values let's say for example here and this is the most common case we are dealing with the polar case so basically these bits are actually going to be generated as plus one or minus one right so that's what we have generated from the source and then after that okay these bits are going through the channel and when they go through the channel the only effect that we will have from this channel is that some noise is going to be added to these bits, right? So noise. And what's noise? It's a random variable that follows a normal distribution, right? A Gaussian or a normal distribution. And that normal distribution will have a mean equal to zero. So our noise is always going to be zero mean. And it has a variance sigma square m right okay and then after that what will happen this generated data which is either plus or minus one added to at the noise value the random value that comes from the noise generator is going to go through the detection process and the detection process as we know compares with with a certain threshold in the case of polar signals the threshold is equal to zero and if the plus or minus one received added to it the noise is greater than zero then i'm going to detect a plus one which is a one logical and if it is smaller than zero then I'm going to detect a minus one which means I'm going to detect a zero binary right now this is exactly what happens in the actual communication system and this is exactly what we want to do in our simulation code and then after that, what remains is in order to calculate the performance, I know ahead of time the set of zeros and ones that I have transmitted. Right? I know all the data that I have transmitted. Now I have the collected data the detected data let's say looks like this <coughs> okay 
right? Then what I will do is compare those two. The one that I generated at the transmitter and the one that I received at the receiver. And out of this comparison, in places where errors have happened, so for example here, an error has happened because it's a different data. And here, what I received is different from what I transmitted, right? So in these two locations, for example, there are errors. So the number of errors divided by total number of bits will be a good approximation of the bit error rate of this system or the probability of error, right? And that's how I can simulate the bit error rate of uh, a BBSK system, for example, as um, versus um, my signal to noise ratio. Now, one question remains is how to control, how to, how to control SNR. Okay. Remember, for polar, okay, uh, B, B, S, K, okay, the energy per bit is equal to, in this case, um, I have, I'm sending a plus one and a minus one, right? So the energy per bit is equal to one times 0 0.5 plus, right? Minus one squared times 0 0.5, which is eventually equal to one, right? The noise in note is equal to sigma n square for any system, right? It's the um, variance of the noise. So from these two, simply, right? I can figure out that EB over N note is equal to 1, that's the energy per bit in this system, divided by sigma N square, right? And by changing the variance sigma N square, so I can fix the energy per bit to 1, and I can change the variance of the random noise that I generate, right? Then I can control uh, the SNR per bit in this system. And if I want, so if you want to generate the curve for bit error rate versus SNR per bit for BPSK, for example, then what you should do is uh, write a code that does the exact same thing that we looked at in the previous slide, um, but you will have to repeat this for different, okay? So repeat the same logic that we discussed. previously okay. for different values of sigma n square which will result in different 
values of S and R per bit, right? And then for each you will have a bit error rate at end of run, right? For each value of sigma n square, you will run for set of input bits, and that generates a set of uh, output bits, and then calculate the bit error rate for that case. So if you want to write this as an algorithmic, so the logic or the flow uh, of a simulation program of BPSK bit error rate will be as follows, right? Step one, generate right large number of ones and zeros, which are actually going to be because they are polar, they are going to be plus ones and minus ones, right? So we generate a large number of plus ones and minus ones which have with prop of 0.5 for each. Okay. Then the next step is going to be <coughs> add generate also. Okay. Let's say here you generate n bits. So here generate n as well random values from normal distribution right with mu equal 0 and variance equal sigma n square you choose the values of sigma n square for each run right and then add okay, um, the two values, right? So each bit will have one of the random values added to it right and then the next step is going to be okay, just those two added values perform comparison with zero threshold Okay, to detect ones and zeros, right? Next is going to be compare the detected ones and zeros with the generated ones and zeros in step one, right? Six and count the number of 
errors right step 6 is going to be divide the number of errors right by the number of generated bits which was n by n right and this will give you this is equal to the bit error rate for the 1 over sigma n square SNR B right then step 7 is going to be repeat all above all above for different sigma n squares which results in different SNR per bit and this way you can eventually generate a curve that shows okay in this one you will have the SNR per bit and in this one you will have the bit error rate and for every SNR per bit you choose you will have some bit error rate right and so on right. for different values of SNRs you will have different bit error rate and eventually you can get the curve typically to be able to compare this curve with what we have in the literature that you can find in your book or some publications or whatever what you actually um, need to do is to make sure that the SNR here, which is um, EB over N note, is represented in DB. So you take, uh, so this, what you have here is actually um, 10 log to the base 10 uh, EB over N note, right? That's what you have on this axis and the other axis is a log scale so this whole graph is a semi log graph right because the y axis is a logarithmic scale right and the x axis is a linear scale but the value that we put in the x axis is um, the uh, db value of the energy per bit over a note while the values that we put on the uh, y-axis are the actual probability of error, right? And um, this way you can generate um, the bit error rate for actually any other communication system. Um, so if you want to do it for the um, uh, QAM, for example, or whatever, the only difference is that uh, rather than your bits being represented by plus one or minus one, they're going to be represented by some complex values. And also in that case, you have to make sure that your noise is represented also by complex values, such that it adds to the real part and it adds to the imaginary part. And then accordingly, you can uh, also change the logic of the detection to make sure it falls in the right quarter. Uh, and then uh, accordingly, you can perform the a bit error rate as well right but it's a little bit complicated in that case because you need to consider the complex and also the detection um, that we discussed last time how like a few lectures ago how to um, detect in the case of um, right in the case of uh, QAM for example you then your detection is going to be based on uh, the received data plus noise in which quarter it falls and then accordingly you'll figure out what's your detected received symbol compare that with the transmitted to figure out how many errors you have so you still uh, have more or less uh, the same uh, logic but it's a little bit more complicated so I hope by understanding this logic you can actually uh, write your program in MATLAB that performs the simulation required in your uh, second software assignment um, 
Uh, and I think that, that that's what I needed to put in this particular tutorial in terms of solving examples and so on. Um, we're going to do that in a uh, coming lecture, um, which is going to be dedicated for solving uh, numeric problems related to your assignment three. That's going to be hopefully the next lecture, inshallah. Thank you.